Okay, so welcome back. Today we're going to talk about a feature in C Sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms Charts. And I've talked a lot about charts on this channel and science engineering business world. They're very important. I even did a three-part series talking about the basics of charts and even the more complex aspects of charts. So I encourage you to look at that. And one of the features we touched on is something we're going to talk about in this video in more detail, and that is called a strip line. So what is a strip line? Well, here is a uh, example, C Sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms application. You can see I've got a chart here, a line chart. And it's got a bunch of data here in red, a bunch of samples. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the Start button. And you can see we've got this moving window, this colored window that is being animated. It's moving across the screen, across the chart. And this gold transparent window is called a strip line. And you can see it's got some text associated with it and a color and it's got a border. And the purpose of a strip line is to highlight a set of data on a chart. And you can see what we've got here is it's highlighting this area of data of these samples in the chart. And the reason it's doing that is because this application is taking the samples, the red data, and in that window that the strip line is highlighting, in that window of data, every step it is taking all of those samples and averaging them. And the result is this diamond shaped point right here. And it is generating a second line chart, as you see here, that has the average of each window of data. So it starts out, it takes the first window of data, comes up with an average, then the next window comes up with another average, draws a line between them, and so on. And we can continue this, and it's going through, and it's basically taking like a moving average of the data. And the, the purpose of this strip line is to highlight the section of data that we're working on. So that's just one use of strip lines, and this is showing you how you can animate them. But there's other reasons that we've talked about before that you might want to use strip lines. So one example is, say for example, you're charting data for each day of the week, and you might want to highlight like we've got here, you know, the Monday data, the Tuesday data, and assign some text to it. That's one use of strip lines. Actually, this is an Excel chart, but you can do the same thing in Visual Studio. Another is an application we showed here where we were in real time monitoring incoming data. And we drew a red strip line to show the user where this data should, what's the normal range that this should be inside. So it gives you a nice visual indication. If the data gets outside that range, you can immediately see it. So a really nice way to highlight data. Now it's important that we first understand the terminology that's used in Windows Forms surrounding strip lines. You can see we've got our chart and we've got a yellowish strip line. The interval offset is the offset of the start of the strip line from the beginning. Okay, so this would be like a three point something interval offset. The width of the strip line, you can vary that, and that's called the strip width. So if you want to move this strip line or place it, you need to know the interval offset. Now, you can not only have one strip line, you can have multiple strip lines. And if you want multiple strip lines, like we showed the days of the week, what you need to do is you need to say, I want to specify an interval between strip lines. And that is basically from the start of one strip line to the start of the next one. So I can specify multiple strip lines. So let's take a look at our C-sharp application and see how we get this done. So here's our C-sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms application. I've got the basic structure that I normally have. And all I've done is I've drag and dropped a chart here and I've got some buttons. Here we've got properties and here in the initialized component, basically I'm setting up the chart and then calculating and plotting the values, the red values, just to get everything set up. Now let me run this and show you. Here's our chart and I've made a minor modification to show you how you can have multiple strip lines in a chart. So I'm going to hit start. And you can see what it's doing. It has made multiple st moving strip lines that are going across. And that is where you need to have the interval property specified. So let's take a look at this. Um, we've got in our properties, we've got 
to chart the data, we've got some X values and Y values for the red data, and then X values one and Y values one for the averaged blue data. And then I've got a double interval offset, which starts out with zero, and we're going to, as we animate it, we're going to step through the offsets to move the strip line to the right. X increment in seconds, um, that is for developing the original red data. Um, strip line width, we talked about strip line width, seconds is 0.5 seconds. And chart time maximum seconds is 10. That's so we can say our chart goes from 0 to 10 seconds. Now here we are calculating how many samples in the strip line. And we're taking the strip line width in seconds, which is half second, divided by X increment in seconds which is 0.01 seconds for each X value. And we are getting the number of samples inside a strip line. And then the total number of samples is the chart maximum time in seconds, which is 10 second chart, divided by the X increment, and that comes out to like 1,000. So this is just initializing everything. And then we're going to configure the chart, calculate and plot values, but we don't really do any strip line stuff there. That's just getting the chart up and running. So as we mentioned, we start the display of the strip line using this start button. We've already charted everything. So when we hit the start button, we're going to display the strip line and the averaged series of data. So let's go to the start button. And what we're doing is we're initially clearing any existing blue series of average data. We're doing X vals one clear, Y vals one clear. And we're resetting the interval offset to zero. So each time I click the start button, it's going to zero everything out and start from the beginning. And here's where we do timer one enabled equals true. We have drag and drop the timer, as you can see down here. And, and that's going to be what's going to update the chart with the moving strip line. And then we are getting, we're doing a method called get average in range. And this is something that we're going to develop so that we can calculate for all of the red data inside the strip line, what is the average so we can come out with a number that we can plot with this X vals one and Y vals one. So the, we call get average in range, it will show you in a bit. And we're doing the start time and then the number of samples in that strip. So now that we've got the timer going, Here's our timer one dot tick, and every second or every half second is going to update the strip line. And each time it's going to define a new strip line. And it's a strip line class. We say strip line, I'm going to call it strip line, is a new strip line. And we have a method to set the strip line, and we're feeding it this new strip line. Every time the timer ticks, we want to erase the old strip line and make a new strip line. And we want to have the new, the updated interval offset. And then we calculate the get average in range and then increment this interval offset is interval offset plus strip line width in seconds. And this last one is just, if we go past the end of the range, past the 10 seconds, we're going to disable the timer. So the set strip line is what really sets up the strip line, all the properties, and gets it ready to go. So let's take a look at that set strip line method. So we've got the configure chart and then we chart and calculate the values. Here is the set strip line method. So this looks a lot like setting up a chart, but it's a little bit different. Um, we are feeding it a strip line and an interval offset, which is going to be updated every time step. And we're starting with an interval offset of zero. So we're saying strip line dot interval offset property we talked about before starts out at zero. The strip line width is what we set up here, strip line width in seconds. The back color is the color of the strip line and we are doing from alpha RGB. So we can specify a transparency, we say 90. If you put 255, it's going to be non-transparent. It's going to be totally uh, this color dot gold. But as you lower that, it's going to get more and more transparent. So we brought it down to about 90 to give it a little bit of transparency. And then the border color around the strip line is color dot gray. So that's really all you need to do to set up the strip line. 
Um, here we have what we talked about before the interval where every one second we're going to draw another strip line every x units. So that's how we can set up multiple strip lines. I'm going to comment that out, but just keep in mind if you want multiple strip lines, you can set the interval just like that. And here, these lines are just to set up the text that says data window. So I'm saying strip line dot text is data carriage return line feed window. So data is above window. And then the color of the text is the dot four color. And I'm saying color dot blue. And I can also say, since it's a font, I can say strip line dot font is a new font. I'm going to say it's Arial size 12. I can also add the font style dot bold. Um, I can not only make it bold, but I can also make it italic. I've commented this out, but basically font style dot italic with this or character font style dot bold. So that's just giving you some idea how you can modify that. We're just going to say bold Arial 12. And then we can set up the alignment and the orientation. The text alignment can either be left, center, or right. And I have put it at center because I want the text to be in the center of the strip line. And then the orientation, normally it's going to default to vertical. Uh, I want it horizontal to be across the top of the strip line. So I'm saying text orientation is text orientation dot horizontal. And then once we've got all that set up, we define what the strip line is going to look like. We say chart one, chart areas, chart area one, axis X, strip lines dot add this strip line that we have set up and configured. So this is what actually puts the strip line on the chart. So really, this is the heart of how you can do a strip line. And then what you have to do in the time step, if you want to animate it, is basically what we show here, which is you get a new strip line. We set the strip line using that new strip line. We set the new interval offset that we're incrementing here. As a side note, we also get the average in range to get that new set of average data, the blue data. And then um, we just check to see if we would, we're at the end of the chart. And then if so, we stop the timer. So that's really the core of how you can do strip lines. You set up these properties, you can do the interval, you can set up a timer to adjust the interval offset, and you're pretty much all set to go. So that's it for this one. Hope it helps. If you like any of these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. But most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.